Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Echo Tingo Echo voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. As in every weekend, today's bulletin is fully in English. We will start as usual with the propagation bulletin of the RSGB. We do have a small SSTV image at the end of the show and of course the Morse code. Hello, this is Nick Bennett, 2E0FGQ, and welcome to the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS National News, supplied by the Radio Society of Great Britain and brought to you by TX Factor. And now the radio propagation report compiled by G0KYA, G4BAO and G3YLA on Friday, March the 11th. Last week we said that a geo-effective solar coronal hole looked like it might threaten the Earth. And we were right. Its open magnetic field allowed plasma to escape, impacting the Earth on Monday and sending the K-index up to 6. This also sparked visible aurora, which was seen in the southern part of the UK. This didn't bode well for the HF bands, which continued to suffer all week as the K-index struggled to recover. Having said that, DX was workable at times. The TX7 Echo Uniform D Expedition in French Polynesia, for example, has been worked from the UK by some better equipped stations. This week, NOAA predicts the solar flux index will be in the range 90 to 95. Geomagnetic conditions may be quieter at the beginning of the week, but storm conditions may return with a vengeance from Wednesday onwards. Make the most of the slightly more settled conditions this weekend when the CW-only Commonwealth contest should give you a great opportunity to work some rare DX entities with little competition from the rest of the world. The K-index is predicted to hit 4 again on Wednesday and 5 for the rest of the week, so we can expect noisy band conditions with lower maximum usable frequencies plus visible and radio aurora. And now the VHF and up propagation news. This may be a good week to look for DX on the multi-mode parts of the bands. At last we have the prospect of some longer-lived tropo as high pressure over Scandinavia links up across the UK with the high near the Azores. Throughout the week high pressure will always be nearby, ending up over the North Sea or Scandinavia. High pressure areas tend to develop temperature inversions in the lower atmosphere with the effect of changing the refractive index of the air over a short vertical distance. In the right conditions, this can form a duct, whereby VHF and UHF signals can travel over much longer distances than normal. These spring systems are not usually as good as the autumn ones, since the air below the inversion is often cold and dry, reducing the refractive index change. The western side of Britain may have low pressure to deal with by the end of the week, but eastern areas across to Scandinavia and northern Europe should yield some results through to the following weekend. This is another quiet week for meteor activity, and for EME operators, the moon reaches maximum declination on Wednesday. This gives long moon windows, albeit with increasing losses, as the moon heads out to apogee. And that's it for this week from the propagation team. On the 19th, the 41st Dutch National Radio Flea Market will be held at Autotron Rosmelen Den Bosch in the Netherlands. The Autotron has its own exit with signs on the A59 motorway. Doors there open from 9am to 3.30 in the afternoon and there are more than 330 stands booked at the event. The Belgian telecoms regulator IBPT has issued a decision permitting access to the new WRC15 60 metre allocation for all Belgian Class A amateur licensees. The allocation is from 5351.5 to 5366.5 kHz on a secondary basis with a maximum power of 15 watts EIRP. All modes are permitted, and Belgian amateurs also now have wider access to 4 metres. The band 70.1125 to 70.4125 MHz has now been made available, with a maximum power from the transmitter output of 50 watts. Secondary status with all modes is available for all Belgian Class A licensees. 
The first UK amateur radio contact on the 241 gigahertz band took place on the 19th of February at 1500 UTC, and that was between Roger G8CUB and Chris G0FDZ. The distance was 30 meters, and the CW signals were 559 and 589. The transmit power at each was in the order of one microwatt, and the antennas used were 250 millimeter and 300 millimeter dishes. This contact has been made on the highest frequency allocation available to amateurs in the UK. Several of the presentations at the RSGB convention in 2015 were videoed, and they're now being made available via the RSGB website. The first talk is on engineering the Gemini range of VHF UHF power amplifiers, was by Chris Bartram, GW4DGU. And if you'd like to view the films, you can go to the video archive section on the RSGB website. Kenwood UK has launched a VHF challenge. The aim is to work as many large locator squares during 2016 on two and six meters as possible. For example, one point for a QSO with Juliet Oscar 01, and one point for India Oscar 91, and so on. All modes are allowed, but not the use of repeaters, satellites, or other forms of relaying. Provide a simple list of your QSOs with stations worked, band, time, and locator squares in either a Word, text, or spreadsheet file to Mark Haynes, M0DXR, by email to Mark dot Haynes, H A Y N E S at U K dot J V C K E N W O O D dot com by the 14th of January 2017, and there will be a trophy and prize for the winner. The MB6 IRH Wires X Simplex Gateway, located in Northwich, Cheshire, is now live. It's located at India Oscar 83 Sierra Gulf on 431.150 MHz Simplex, and more details can be found by email to g0sph at g0sph.tv. The Arvon Repeater Group has announced an upgrade to their 70 centimeter repeater GB3AN. It's located on the northeast coast of Anglesey. The repeater has a change of operation with the recent installation of a Yesu DR1X fusion repeater system, and following an NOV, it became operational in dual mode. Digital voice mode of C4FM, together with normal FM, is now available, and the operating channel is RB08. An output frequency of 433.2 megahertz and receive frequency of 434.8 megahertz with a CTCSS access tone of 110.9 hertz. Reports on the coverage would be very welcomed via the website at www.arvon.info. That's www.arfon.info. Coming up at the end of March is an opportunity to work the sixth most wanted DXCC entity, according to the Club Log DXCC Most Wanted list. Juan de Nova is a small island located between Mozambique and Madagascar, with the IOTA reference AF012. It was last activated in 2003, but FT4JA should be on the air starting on the 29th of March. Leading up to the D expedition, two of its operators, Fox Two Delta X-ray and Fox Six Bravo Echo Echo, will head to Mayotte Island, Alpha Fox Zero Two Seven, which is northeast of Juan de Nova, and be active as Fox Hotel Slash using their home call signs from the 18th to 24th of March, when they'll focus on the six. Two 40-meter bands, and the other eight FT4JA operators will join them later. Laat jij wel eens een lange break? Ja zeker. Ik laat geregeld een lange break. En waarom doe je dat dan? Nou, dat de Echolink gebruikers ook een beetje lucht hebben. Ja, geef de Echolink gebruikers lucht.
Weet jij dat nog? Was oom Jan niet ook een eterpiraat? Ja oom Jan uit Drenthe, ja zeker, die draaide altijd oom Pikourier, in een poep en een zucht. Weet jij wat er met zijn oude zendinstallatie gebeurd is? De laatste bedoel ik, want de rest zal wel in beslag genomen zijn. Nee, nee, die heeft tante Sjaan in het dressoir bewaard, als herinnering. Ik denk dat die oude zender daar nog steeds in zit. Moeten we binnenkort niet eens een keer weer bij tante Sjaan op bezoek? Ja, ja, dat is gezellig. Nee, ik bedoel niet omdat het gezellig is, maar over vier maanden is het weer contest en ik kan de trafo van de eindtrap goed gebruiken. Jij harteloze kwal.